If you saw a car advertised and in the description it said MOT, then you'd expect it to mean that the car had passed its MOT and that the owner had an MOT certificate to prove it. When you're looking for a water-fed pole system and you see equipment promoted as crash tested, then you'd expect that there'd be a certificate to prove that too. However, you may be surprised to learn that many suppliers who have videos on their websites of crash tests do not have any safety certificates from the organization that carried out the tests. For clues to why this is, take a closer look at some of those videos to see the water and other items come loose, mounting bolts pull through the van floor and driver and passenger seats thrust forward from the force of tanks hitting the bulkheads. You see, a water-fed pole system doesn't need to become completely detached and enter the cab in order to cause serious injury or loss of life. The whole point of testing should be to promote safety and not sales. Since 2003, when Ionic conducted the very first crash test of a water-fed pole system, there have been many serious accidents involving window cleaners' vans and sadly at least one reported fatality due to a poorly installed tank. Increasingly, insurers are asking to see test certificates like this one to prove that water-fed pole systems have been successfully tested to the FMV SS208 safety standard. In this video, we're going to see how Onyx Systems installs the reach and wash system into customers' vans. The machine to be installed here is a top-of-the-line V4 fusion system with stainless steel filter housings. V4 stands for version 4 of Ionex's original reach and wash system, first introduced in 1997. Built to last in rust-free stainless steel, there are many 20-year-old systems still in use today. Although checked repeatedly during the sales process, the first job of the fitter is to check the vehicle's data plate to see whether the vehicle payload is sufficient for the weight of the equipment when fitted and full of purified water. The penalty for drivers of overloaded vehicles is high, starting with a fine of £5,000. Ionic simply will not fit a machine into vans with insufficient payload, even if that means losing a sale. Compromising a window cleaner's life is not what Ionic is about. Next, the van is lifted so that the install can be properly planned from underneath. Ionic systems are bolted through the vehicle's chassis and cross members, but never the floor. In order to comply with stringent emissions rules, the underfloor area of vans has become cluttered with DPFs, catalytic converters, and recently AdBlue tanks, as well as airflow panelling, soundproofing, and heat shielding. All of this means the install is more difficult and time consuming. Without a vehicle lift, the job would be nearly impossible. In fact, one should be skeptical of any installer's ability to do a thorough job when they do not have access to a vehicle lift. Once the work has been properly assessed, the first task using the correct template is to drill all of the mounting holes through the floor and chassis and cut the panels for the ports, the pole racks and electricity connections. Once all the metal work is completed, the swarf is removed and the vehicle is placed in the spray bay for prep and the application of the protective floor covering. The principal benefit of undertaking the work in this order is that the bare metal edges in the floor will be coated and protected from rust. Further, no swarf will be left to rust on top of the coating, which is always the risk when holes are cut after the floor coating has been applied. Before Ionic invented the reach and wash system, the business manufactured a line of rooftop anchorage equipment for abseiling. The company operated a highly regarded abseiling window cleaning business that covered the whole of the UK, cleaning windows on buildings that others said were impossible to access. For over three decades, safety has been at the forefront of Ionic's business. Naturally, many of these working at height principles spilled over into the reach and wash system. Ionix anchorage equipment was tested and certified to the harmonised European standard BSEN 795, which called for a safety factor of 10 to 1. That means that the equipment was capable of supporting 1,000 kilograms, both as a static load and as a dynamic load, in order to safely support a man plus equipment weighing around 100 kilograms. Applying this 10 to 1 safety factor to the design of the support system to secure a filled 1,000 litre reach and wash water tank system during a head-on collision at 30 miles an hour meant that the frame and mounting system had to be strong enough to support a load equal to 520,000 kilograms. This is because the energy released during a head-on collision subjects a full 1,000 litre tank to 52,000 kilograms of force. By example, when you look at Ionic's crash test video, you'll see that the mounting brackets used in the test were fabricated steel items. Six of these were used, two at the front and four at the back. Note that these were strong enough to secure the 52,000 kilogram load and pass the test. 
These are the clamps that will be used today. As you can see, they're even more substantial than the ones used in the crash test. Soon after the crash test in 2003, Ionic subjected their fabricated steel clamps to further testing individually and found that these clamps would give an overall safety factor of around five to one. Good, but not satisfied, Ionic developed and independently tested these cast brackets and found them individually to fail when around 90,000 kilograms of force was applied. So these cast brackets, identified by the FMV SS208 lettering, provide a safety factor of around 10 to one when all six are used together. When people comment that crash testing is only carried out at around 30 miles per hour, one should remember that 30 miles an hour with airbags and crumple zones, one would only hope to walk away with minor injuries. However, if your seat was pushed forward by a poorly installed heavy water-fed pole system, then the compression injuries caused by the pre-tensioning seatbelt could cause your heart and lungs to be punctured by your own ribcage. It should be pointed out that voluntarily and at considerable expense, Ionic undertook five tests in total, motivated by the desire to ensure that water-fed pole window cleaning retained a 100% safety record compared with ladder access window cleaning that water-fed poles replaced. Here we can see Owen, one of the Ionic fitters who has many years of experience fitting reach and wash systems like this one. With the floor sprayed and the V4 fitted, it's easy to see why the new owner will be pleased with his investment. 
When he shows off this genuine reach and wash system to prospective customers, they'll be reassured that they've chosen a quality window cleaner and that the price that he quoted was justified. He may not be the cheapest window cleaner in the area, but he's well on his way to building a successful future for his family and a comfortable retirement. With a machine that will last him his entire working life, the cost to earnings ratio will prove to be very low as the years go by. And should he quit window cleaning, the second hand value of his V4 will be considerably higher than that of any competing brand. Before we finish, I'm going to leave you with a few tips to help you choose wisely and safely. Number one, check that there are at least six mounting points and that at least four of them go through the chassis or a cross member. None should go through the floor and most should be at the rear of the system. Number two, underneath. Large six millimeter plates should be used to prevent the bolts pulling through. Washers alone are not sufficient. Three, stainless steel bolts have low tensile strength and shear easily. The bolts used should be high tensile steel and be at least M14 with minimum 12 ton shear strength. Reject smaller diameter bolts. Number four, aluminum brackets have little strength and should be rejected. Number five, folded steel brackets may easily unfold unless they're cross braced. Number six, powder coated mild steel mounting brackets will rust over time and become weak. These are best avoided, but may be fine for a year or two after which they should be replaced. Number seven, the better systems use stainless steel angle with three millimeter minimum thickness. It's best to avoid powder coated mild steel frames because they'll rust and they'll become weak over time. Number eight, Look for triangulation and bracing in the design. Strong structures such as bridges employ triangulated designs. Frames without triangulation will be inherently weak. Number nine, never exceed the vehicle's payload. And number 10, make sure that you'll receive a copy of the original crash test certificate from the organization that carried out the testing. You may only appreciate its value in the event of an accident, but in the event of an investigation by the authorities or your insurance company, you'll be glad that you have one. Choose wisely and stay safe.